All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a list of software companies that have recently been funded uh, within the last year, uh, and that's either pre-seed, seed, or series A. Um, I'm going to show you how to build the list step by step, uh, export it out of Crunchbase, put it into Apollo, Clay, uh, Enrich it, all of that good stuff. Um, I'm going to be targeting or building the list basically mainly from the UK and US. Um, and then at the end of the video as well, if you would like to download the lead list, um, there will be a link below. You can pay what you want for it. You can get it for free if you want, or you can pay more. You can pay 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever you think the lead list is worth. Feel free to pay it. Um, and uh, yeah, this will be verified emails. I'll show you the entire process um, and go step by step. So first things first, what we want to do is want to build the initial list of accounts or companies in uh, Crunchbase. Um, now, obviously, you can do this on different softwares, but I'm choosing Crunchbase just because they tend to be a little bit better with uh, data for and proper categorization for software companies. Um, and also for investment, anything investment related, they are by far the best uh, place to go to. So what we're doing here, and I've already done this, and I'm not going to do this part of it specifically because I've already done this in other videos. Um, but essentially, we want to put in the keywords. So anything to do with technology, software, so SaaS, fintech, software, cloud computing, things like that. Um, we're targeting in here, specifically US and UK. Um, the next thing that's important is number of employees. I'm putting it 11 to 100. Um, that's kind of the regional range for pre-seed. Um, and actually, we, we yeah, that's maybe not pre-seed per se, but more for seed and um, and Series A. But there might be some pre-seed companies in there as well. Um, and then the next thing that's important is financials. And we go to last funding date and we go past year. So in the past 365 days and then pre-seed, seed, and series A. So we've got that. We can also make it more specific, but for this tutorial, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm just keeping it relatively open. And then what we would do is, as we've done before in previous videos, we've got 1600 companies here. We would um, click here, we would select all, and then we would um, put that and saved it to a list. And then we would exclude that list from the next search. And then that would mean um, we would basically be able to scrape those. And then we would export the two lists on instant data scraper. Um, and in terms of the, um, in terms of the, what's it called? The data points that you actually have here. Um, so we're going to go software companies raised. Um, and I wonder if it's actually going to show up. No. Um, yeah. So you, we, the columns that we've added, um, and I'll show you actually here are the company name, the industry and keywords. So if you're, if you're watching this video and you get the downloaded sheet, you can just, um, you can basically filter by this. So if they're a fintech company, you'll be able to filter by fintech and so on and so forth, or based on the location, I've um, got a description, the website, the LinkedIn, the Twitter, the investment type that it was. So early stage, seed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the last funding round and or when that investment date was. Um, and then what I'm going to do potentially here. So for some reason, when I'm scraping, it just does not allow me to take in the amount. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to have a link and then I'm going to scrape it through clay and see how that uh, feasible that is. And we've got two lists here. So we've got one and uh, one of a thousand, one of 600, and then we're going to combine them together in clay. So that's what we've done. We just scraped, um, we literally just scraped it, instant data scraper. I've showed you in another video how to do that. So that's step number one that you want to do, get the list of companies. Step number two that we're going to do, now we're in clay, we've uploaded them. I've tidied them a little bit in this uh, spreadsheet, which is why I put it so I take it from Crunchbase to spreadsheet, tidy it in the spreadsheet, then import it to Clay as a CSV. Now we've got a list of 1600. You want to always make sure that you dedupe as well. So you can just click dedupe. Um, I've already done this, but you want to make sure that you're doing that so that, um, yeah, you're not having duplicates. Um, so yeah, once you're in here, then what we're going to do is we're going to go to enrich data. And there's two ways of doing this. We can either find people through clay, but I might actually try finding people through Apollo and see what this like, see what this is like, um, because we've already got the, so find people at company by job title, enrich person with Apollo, find account. Okay, interesting. Okay, find people by job title. Um, so in terms of the people that we want to reach out to, obviously decision makers, so like CEO, um, chief executive, Officer, uh, I did not spell that correctly. Um, I'm going to put in these, uh, and then I'll show you afterwards. Okay, so I just realized as I was going through this, I realized that um, it's because this is the first time I'm finding people through Clay on Apollo. Because normally I just go directly to Apollo, but I just wanted to try something new here. But I just realized that the company domains, um, you need a comma-separated list, so I'd need to basically copy all of the websites from here. 
um, and then I would need to input them. And I don't, I'm not willing or want to do that right now. So instead, I'm just going to find people on clay and then I'm going to enrich them through Apollo. So we're going to find people and then we're going to go job title and we're going to do uh, in terms of seniority, I'm going to keep it really broad so that this list can help out as many people as possible. There's going to be 2,500 contacts in total. Um, and then we're going to obviously find the email addresses and then maybe by the end of it, of the verified emails, we might have like, I don't know, um, maybe 1500 or something, give or take. But uh, yeah, we're just going to keep it at like uh, sort of higher level. Um, location is not important. None of this stuff is important. We're just going to preview people. We should have like 10,000 plus, um, but obviously LinkedIn doesn't allow us to pull all of that information. Um, so I'm just going to wait for that to come up. So yes, yeah, so we've got 2,500 um, and these are all yeah CEOs, things like that. So that's perfect. I'm going to import. Great. So once we've imported, the next thing we do is we always, I always map the columns from the company table. Um, so we've got full name, job title, location, um, the domain, and then the LinkedIn. Um, I just wonder if that's the LinkedIn profile. That's the personal LinkedIn profile, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. So we've got the personal LinkedIn. And then what we want to do is we want to enrich or not enrich, but we want to put the company link, uh, company, uh, map the company data as well. So company LinkedIn, um, we want to pull the description. Um, and it's great that Crunchbase allows you to export the description because if you didn't, you would basically have to enrich uh, through Clay, which will cost credits. So um, yeah, and then we can put the funding amount uh, link and we might be able to scrape that later. Um, we're going to go investment type and we're going to add that going to add the industry and keywords so you can search. So in the list at the end, you can search basically if you're targeting SaaS companies and then you can like filter it as UK SaaS companies or US SaaS companies or FinTech companies or whatever it is. And then we can also go last investment date. So you can re have like a priority list of the companies that you want to reach out to. Um, for some reason, we don't have the Twitter um, the location. We don't need that. Uh, what else do we need? Location. That might be the person prospects location. So we're just going to map the last one, which is the uh, company location so you might have the prospects location and the company location um and then we've got that and then next we might want to just double check if we've mapped these correctly um so i always map the first name just because if you're using an email sending software it will normally be the first variable that you actually use so it's just good to have that um so i will add that in we'll just organize it perfect so yeah, you can see here, we've got a list of 2,500 people. Um, these are all the industries that you've got here in keywords. So again, you can filter these. So if you've got the list afterwards, you can type in artificial intelligence and then you can filter by the companies that have got artificial intelligence. And then you can sort it by the investment date um, and the uh, stage of investment that they uh, received. Um, some obviously won't show for whatever reason, but most of them do. Um, and then I'm going to have a look at um, the funding amount. Um, either I'll scrape it, or if not, I will leave it there. But you should be able to view this and see, for example, here, um, money raised. They got Series A, uh, tw 12th of October, um, 2023. Um, yeah, so you should be able to see, and they got 43 million or whatever it was. So yeah, you should be able to see here the actual funding amount link um from that link sorry cool so now that we've got that we are going to enrich with uh, apollo um so the way that we're going to do this is so what we're going to do is we're going to click on enrich data and we're going to type in apollo here um now this works if you've got your apollo api key connected to clay um so we're going to enrich person and then we can set the inputs but we're not going to do that we are just going to um, continue to add fields show more we just want the email that's what we want all right, so we're going to push and pull all the email addresses that we can. And if we can't pull uh, any more email addresses, then we'll move on to the waterfall enrichment. So we'll use Apollo first. If we can't find the email through Apollo and the verified email through Apollo, then we'll move over to Prospio and the whole waterfall thing that you've seen me do in other videos. And we're going to go save and run first 10 rows. So I'm hoping that this should pull out the uh, email address. So found data, person, let's have a look. So we can get the email. Okay, no email. Interesting, no email. Interesting, hold on, let me see if I can 
fix this. Sure. So I just made the mistake of not mapping the fields. I don't know why, but I thought that you could just not map the fields. So instead of what I, I did, I'll show you the changes that I just made. Um, so you just go set inputs and just make sure you've got first, last name. You can also put the full name as well, but I split the names. Um, obviously we don't have the email address, um, but we can pull the company name and then we've got the company domain uh, as well. Whereas before we were just going from the company domain, so it wasn't working. Um, so I just realized I've just got to add those bits in. And then now you can see here, we've got the email addresses and it was able to find um, eight out of 10 email addresses, which is pretty cool. Um, so if we go over to Apollo, you can kind of see how the, um, yeah, so you can see here the email credit usage um, as well. And uh, it'll basically pull the credits from Apollo um, from the list that you're building here. So we're just going to run this for run column and we're just going to run uh, 250 rows, just see what it looks like. And then starting from row 11. Um, so we're just going to run these. And then what I would do next is I would uh, verify these email addresses. Um, so we want to go to enrich data. I'm going to go to validate, uh, validate email. And we're going to input the emails that we get. Email person, great. Only safe to send, obviously. Exclude free emails. Free domains. Yeah, so we obviously don't, because of uh, the new policies from Google, we don't want to have any personal emails. Um, and then we just want to run this. So um, add, I'm just going to save it on first 10 rows, just see what it looks like. And then this is basically going to validate the emails uh, as we pull up the emails from Apollo. And then what's going to happen after that is if the email is validated, then obviously we leave it. But if it is not validated, then we will open up a workflow or a waterfall workflow where we um, say, for example, this person, we haven't found that email. So they would go into the workflow uh, for the waterfall. Um, this person, for example, their email was invalid. So they would go into the waterfall. Um, and that way we're able to get coverage from literally four or five different data providers all at one time, um, which is, is pretty cool. So you're able to get the most amount of coverage. So yeah, once we've got that, then we would go to, um, well, we're not going to do it just yet. We're going to run the columns. So we go over to valid emails and then we're just going to, uh, push out the valid email. So we go, uh, Apollo valid email just to make sure that the email column is is uh, all tidy um okay great so now what we're going to do is we're going to go enrich data and we're going to go to uh, email um, and this is how you make best use of the formula um can you figure new provider instead all right we don't need the clagent thing Right, so really Prospio is the one that we want to, Prospio tends to find pretty much most emails, which is great. Um, and then we're going to do it on debounce like that. Um, only safe to send, obviously, and then run settings. So this is the important part. You want to go and run settings and go only run this column if, so this is empty. So that means that if this column is empty, so if the valid email, if it hasn't got a valid email, it will run. So you can see here, valid email and column will run? No, no valid email, column will run yes. So they're basically giving us the most amount of coverage because we've already found these email addresses. We don't want to waste credits or waste anything. We're going to do it for the ones that it hasn't found yet. And um, we're going to go outputs correct and we're just going to go save and run first 10 rows. And then this, this is how you get the most amount of coverage um, from one place. This is how you get the most amount of coverage. Um, cause then now instead of finding eight out of 10, right, if we had just gone with the initial list, we actually would have had, so we're missing two emails and we're missing, uh, two, two valid ones. So we would have had six emails. Whereas now with this, oh, I think I'm out of clay credits. I need to update. Um, but now with this, um, basically what it's going to do is it's going to say, uh, Hey, um, you know, like this one we weren't able to find, but now we're able to find it here. And same with this one, like now we're able to find it here. So instead of that, we're able to actually find seven or eight or even nine possible, um, even nine possible, uh, what's it called? Uh, email addresses. And so, yeah, it's, uh, you're able to get like eight or nine out of 10 instead of six out of 10. So that's the power of using like multiple different providers. Um, I'm just going to update my whole thing. And, uh, but yeah. This is actually, I'm just going to finish the video because I might as well. Um, and I'll finish the list afterwards, but 
this is a good indication of how you build a list like this. Um, and it's pretty cool. So we've taken it from Crunchbase. We've got now information on the funding amount, um, you know, like the whole company and everything, how much they funded when they last funded. We've got the decision makers here. We've got, you know, CEOs, et cetera, et cetera. We've got their domain. We've got their LinkedIn profiles. Um, and then now we're also uh, and the stage of funding that they're at and the industry that they're in. And then now we're also building out the email addresses and getting the most amount of coverage. So hopefully from here, we've got 2,500 rows. Um, hopefully from here, we can build out a list of uh, quite a few. Um, after obviously verification, it will like filter it down and everything. So we'll start off with 2,500. We might end up with maybe 1,000 to 1,500. Um, with more data providers, you're able to obviously get more coverage, um, but then it ends up costing more. So you really just got to weigh up like what, uh, what you can do. Um, but yeah, I hope you've, found this video useful. Um, I will share the list uh, at the end in the video uh, description below. Um, and there should be, I'm guessing anywhere from 1000 to 1500 leads within that list. Um, it's pay what you want. So if you found the video useful, and you want to give me some cash for the lead list that I put together, then feel free to do so. If you want to build it yourself, by all means do it. And if you want to just watch the video, by all means do that. If you want it for free, you can also get it for free. So it's pay what you want. If you want 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it is, great. Um, but uh, yeah, I just want to kind of give uh, in that sense and leave it up to you for the value that you basically get from these videos, plus also the lead list that I built. So yeah, I will see you in the next one. Peace.